So this was a case uh, that was referred uh, by a dentist. Uh, the dentist uh, started the access cavity uh, preparation in this tooth. The patient had already undergone ortho treatment and had a retainer. And then uh, there was swelling and pain in relationship to this particular tooth. So uh, the dentist uh, drilled inside, couldn't find the canal and then referred the case. Now, when uh, she came, she already had a cone beam CT with her. And this is what we saw. So you have uh, an evidence of an access quite deep and still no trace of the canal and obviously the reason why there's no canal is because it's calcified up to here so the actual canal starts from here onwards this is another uh, view and you can again see that the part from here to here is completely calcified so when you look at this uh, tooth after we isolated it and looked at it under the microscope this is what we see we see a pretty bad calcification there's a bit of a break here labelly so you can see this whole mass of calcification, even on the palatal side, when you look at it, this is how it looks. So you can see this entire mass is what at once upon a time used to be the pulp chamber and it's now completely calcified. So what do we do in this case? We start drilling out, say, this part here. Uh, we remove that calcified portion and we keep trying to remain in the center of the tooth. And uh, this is what we call the fisheye technique. So whenever we... Um, uh, drill down calcified canals uh, what I usually like to do is I put some water into the cavity and then get a view from far just to get a perspective of where things are and this kind of tells you that we are kind of central to this tooth and you can also see the dark mass here which tells us that this used to be the pulp once upon a time so this is something that I do sometimes uh, just to get a, a macroscopic view of the whole thing so once you're done with that we keep uh, drilling down uh, uh, in an area and it's quite consistent you can see the calcified mass stays very consistent and we keep drilling down and uh, every time we have a doubt whether we are on track or not what I usually like to do is either I put the burr here and take an x-ray uh, but when you're coronal then sometimes the burr doesn't stay we usually use a Munz burr so instead of the Munz burr what I like to do is I inject the gutta perka on whichever particular area that I'm drilling at and then I inject some gutta perka there and then take a, an x-ray and suppose the gutta perka is here, then it tells me that maybe I need to move slightly uh, towards the mesial half to make sure I'm remaining in the center. So I keep doing that. And sometimes as I go deeper, when there's enough purchase for a burr, then I sometimes use the burr itself and expose the x-ray, the radiograph. And uh, if I find that I'm going towards one side, then I always reorient. Uh, here you can see I'm slightly, slightly off towards the mesial, and then I reorient towards the distal and then keep going down. So we kept doing this, but this particular tooth, we weren't really able to find out. And at one point, I was kind of confused uh, whether or not I am going palately or labially. So what happens is with radiographs, when you expose radiographs like this, you get a very good uh, sense of whether or not you are deviating mesially or distally. But you can't really tell whether you're moving too much palately or labially. Uh, so that happens as you go deeper down the route. So when it reaches the stage and you're not really sure, then what I do is I inject gutta perka. And then I close up the tooth. So you have this injection gutta perka as to where we were drilling. In that area, the deepest part, we inject gutta perka and then close it with a temporary. And then take an inter-appointment CBCT. So in the inter-appointment CBCT, you can see uh, this is a mesio. In the mesiodistal angulation, you can see it looks as though it's uh, we are on track in the center because there's equal number, amount of tooth structure both mesially and distally. But, but in this particular angle, you can kind of make out that we are going far too palately. So you can see the carpaca extruded here and on labial to where off the extruded carpaca, you can see trace of what looks like a canal. So when you reproduce what we've seen and the knowledge that we've seen in the cone beam CT clinically, we realize that the canal is labial to where the gutta perka was. So this is where we were clean looking for initially. So what we need to do is look for the canal labial to this particular gutta perka. So that's what we did. We looked labial and sure enough, that's where the canal was. And uh, once you find the canal, then the rest of the things is fairly straightforward. We put calcium hydroxide and then we waited for the patient's symptoms to subside. And then we obturated this tooth. So once we obturated the tooth, um, of course, the tooth was discolored, so we wanted to find out what to do for this tooth. So I asked my colleague, Dr. Justin, to see whether we could avoid a crown and you know get away with just bleaching. And that's what Justin did. Uh, we uh, Justin uh, attempted uh, walking bleach for this particular tooth, and then we got a good, uh, good shade, and then uh, Justin built up this tooth with a 
fiberglass post and a composite core and uh, we just left it like that no crown for this particular tube 